Hello and welcome to this week's YouTube video. In previous videos I have talked about the importance of editing out your detail. Many of you have let me know how much you struggle with doing this. In today's video I wanted to show you exactly how to do this, explain why it is important and discuss the issues that can arise in paintings if you focus too much on the detail. I will be using this Woolly Dog Commission as an example for the purposes of this video. So let's get straight into it. Editing out detail is like everything in oil painting. You have to practice it before it becomes second nature. The eye versus the camera. If you work from photos, as I do for my animal commissions, getting caught up in the detail is easy because we have the photo in front of us. Remember, a photo will capture the entirety of an image in equal detail, but the eye does not see like this. The eye has a central point of focus or area of interest and then everything else is blurred. Looking at Woolly, it would be very easy to try and paint the detail of that curly fur because the camera has captured it. I would become lost in the detail and it would negatively impact the final version of my painting by pushing out my values. Let me explain how using this photo of Finfin. Fin. I've edited out the background so the focus is just on him. If I drop this image into Photoshop, I can demonstrate the biggest error artists make when focusing in on the detail. Let's assume I am working very closely from this photo taking the foot area as my example. I am trying to replicate what I see and because I have a photo in front of me, it is easy to see these tiny shifts in value. So I might see this area here and overcompensate by going too light with strong edges. I might also overcompensate in this area here too. And then this area and this area. Everywhere I think I see a shift. Look what happens to our photo when we do this. See how out I now am. If I turn it into grayscale and compare the black and white images again, you'll see how out it looks. This is called overmodeling, and it is the biggest mistake artists make when working from photographs. It's just too tempting to paint all that detail. So how do you get around this? Number one, using Photoshop. If you have access to Photoshop, you can use a tool called the Median tool, which can be found in Filter, Noise, Median. I have adjusted this by around 16 pixels. You will now notice if I compare my two photos that my smallest value shifts have now disappeared. Once you have figured out your main value areas, you can switch back to a full colour photo and perhaps implement number three, still to be discussed, as this will stop you from adding too much detail in your blocked areas. Number two, squinting. If you don't have access to Photoshop or you are working from life, this will work just as well. You need to practice half closing your eyes by around 25%, then maybe 50%, then maybe 75%. What you are seeing will be a little different from the Photoshop version as your objects will get darker generally. But the principle is the same. Your shapes will begin to merge together and the small value shifts will begin to disappear, just like in my previous example. Once you have squinted to figure out your main value areas, you can reopen your eyes to help you with the colour. Number three. Place your photo at a distance. If you are struggling with numbers one and two, you could try placing your photo at least two metres away from your workstation. You just won't be able to see the small details to paint them. But this method will not give as good a result as methods one or two. It is helpful though when you have moved on to paint the colour in more detail. Why are these methods useful? All three of these methods will help you to remove the detail from your subject and concentrate on the main value blocks. It is important to get these in first. Very often you will not need to adjust areas any further outside of your area of interest. For example, look at the painting of Fin Fin's paw. It has not progressed past my initial blocking stage. However, for my area of interest, I have then gone back in and added more of my value shifts. 
You will also be able to identify your hard defined edges and soft edges using this method. If you can clearly see your edges when you have implemented either of methods one and two, you can paint them in as hard edges. If your edges have disappeared or significantly softened, then paint them this way. Don't be tempted to paint them in more definitively when you are working on your colour in more detail. If you are finding that now your areas look a little boring outside your area of interest, try doing a colour change first, rather than a value change, temperature change or edge change. For example, looking at my painting of woolly, I have adjusted the saturation of my oranges for the wooden floor to give a bit of variation. Woolly's coat is a very good example of this too. Creating that woolly effect has been done with very little detail. If I turn this painting into black and white, you will see how incredibly close my values are. If I zoom in really closely to the finished painting, you'll see I have created the effect of a woolly coat in various ways. Brushwork. I've used a combination of brushes between flat brush that load up the paint. I will then lay them on my painting a bit like you would lay a sticker. I am more likely to use this brush for areas of thicker paint, so my lighter areas, for example, that carry more opaque white paint. Remember, white paint is stiffer, more opaque than a lot of other colours and can therefore be laid more thickly. This gives me contrast between thick and thinner paint. I have also used coma brushes that allow me to brush my paint gently over certain areas, giving me a softer look. This also gives me a contrast between soft paint strokes and more defined brush strokes. Again, this helps create that fluffy coat effect. Temperature. I have used temperature shifts to create that fluffy sense of form. Notice how that leg shifts from cool to warm to cool. I've done this across the whole body. Edges. Notice how my edges, even in my shadows, are painted in broken strokes. My only really hard edge is my eye. This broken brush stroke effect helps give a sense of wooliness to my dog's coat. To recap then, number one, use Photoshop or squinting to help you identify your main values. Number two, when painting your colour, use a photo at distance from your workstation to stop you from painting in the detail. Number three, Use brushwork, temperature changes and edges to give interest to your artwork. I hope you have enjoyed today's video and found it useful. Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find examples of my work and also details of online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.